of different things that I tell students when we're getting started um, is that drawing is really all about your body um, and your posture is really important. These drawing courses are meant for drawing. They're a little, um, they're a little inelegant the way you have to send them, but this is actually a very, very good way to draw. Um, oftentimes when people are starting to draw or if they don't have experience drawing, um, they have a tendency to get really tight. And by that I mean uh, they're kind of like really into their drawing. But sitting back is really important. Uh, and being able to see your whole page is really important. I'm just starting off by making straight lines. Uh, and by sort of doing these straight lines, You can see I'm moving pretty quickly, and they're pretty straight. Um, and that's my goal. My goal is to loosen up. Um, I am not using my wrist while I'm doing this. I'm actually drawing from my shoulder. Um, and this means that I have a full range of movement. Um, if I were sort of drawing, holding my pencil like this, like you would if you're writing, you're not going to be able to get that full range of movement. You're going to be a little hesitant while you're drawing. And I think one of the biggest obstacles to people learning how to draw is that initial hesitancy. Um, so if you can get over that initial hesitation, maybe you can do something really nice. Um, so I usually have students warm up and do as many straight lines in different directions as they can. Uh, the other thing that I have students do, uh, to start off with uh, making circles, You can see I'm just moving really, really quickly, and I'm just trying to use my shoulder. Um, the other thing I have students, exactly. The other thing I have students do to start off with um, is to also make ellipses. And the goal is to build sort of like a fluency and just move very, very quickly. I'm not using the fine tip of my pencil at the moment. Uh, I'm using the side of the pencil. And that's a preference for me right now because I love the materiality of charcoal. I love how charcoal looks. I love how it feels. And for right now, I want to get as much charcoal on the page as possible. Uh, there is a gift in being able to do very, very simple things. I think doing simple things really well is hard enough. Uh, and then doing really complicated things, that's just, you know, maybe it's too hard. And if you focus on a foundation, you can sort of climb a ladder and get a little bit higher. Uh, so, uh, you know, the easiest thing to do now is to sort of draw a cylinder because I have my lips and I have my straight lines. I can even uh, sort of, uh, you can say, extrapolate from that idea, and I can even draw other things now. So um, a cylindrical object, uh, like a teapot or a mug, I can draw as well, right? So. And it's just using that same basic idea where I have an ellipse like this. And I can just sort of inform my drawing with new shapes that are based on that very simple principle. Um, so I usually have students sort of start with this warm up. Um, and it gets them really, really loose. Um, and it gets them drawing very, very easy, basic things. Um, I like them to sort of fill the page and to not be afraid of the page. Um, so that's something that I would, now that we all have these like kind of sharp pencils and materials, we can sort of move forward with that. Um, I'll also sort of hand out some of this uh, fine charcoal for all of you, which is also a nice material. Something I tell students is that 
everyone's different in a wonderful way. Um, and I'm not trying to be like cliche about it. I really do believe that, um, that everyone has like their unique hand. And so for some people, that's like very, very kind of basic charcoal that's not in a pencil format, um, it actually lets them loosen up a lot more. Um, so I'll also make this available for all of you to use. And you can pick and choose if you want to use the pencil or if you want to use this. Um, you'll have to wash your hands afterwards because it's very messy. Um, but it's a great material. Uh, and I love just sort of taking the charcoal and just if I need to sort of have a different length or something, um, I just break it very easily. Um, and this, be this is like your hand at this point. Do I have any questions? Because sometimes I like to teach a little conceptually first, meaning that I want you to understand why I'm teaching you the way I'm teaching you. And then you kind of do it the right way. Does that make sense to everyone? <coughs> I move across the form to double check widths, and then I sort of take my line, my parallel line, and I go down here. As I mentioned, this ellipse right here and this ellipse right here, they should be about the same proportion or ratio, even though this one's on the bottom and this one's on the top. Now, that's, that's a fake drawing, it's not a real drawing. Um, if I wanted to draw the bottle that's right in front of me, I have a couple of different tactics um, that I can use. Uh, one tactic I tell students is imagine that there is uh, an invisible box around the object. And this way you can see the negative space as well as the positive space. So in this case, In this case, this is positive space, everything that I can touch. Everything that's around the bottle is negative space. If I were to draw an invisible box around the object, I would understand what this shape is right here, this angle. So that's something that I teach the students conceptually the first day. Um, but to make it easy for everyone so you can all read of one bottle, I clearly want like one drawing. Um, is this method called sighting, uh, which is which means literally that I am borrowing what I am seeing um, from in front of me. Uh, so, like if I wanted to find the angle of a straight line, I can hold my, I close one eye, kind of like this, and squint, so I can see a little bit better. I hold my pencil up to the angle, and then I bring it down to the paper, so that I am translating exactly what I see. Um, if I wanted to find the angle of the vase in front, sorry, the bottle in front of me, uh, I can sort of take my pencil, and you guys can't see what I see, so I'm gonna tell you. I'm taking my pencil, I am lining it up to the edge of the bottle where it tapers, right underneath the bottle cap, and then I can go like this, and I can bring sort of that angle back down. And I can do the same thing for the other side of the bottle, and I can bring it back down. Um, I am literally, borrowing from what I'm seeing in front of me. Now, what I like to tell students is, sometimes they like to do that signal like this. They're like, okay, it's lined up. And then they're like, <laughs> you know? And it, but it's not what I'm, I'm literally taking what I've seen in front of me and I'm translating it. So this is why the body thing is really important. Because if you're using your full arm and not using your wrist, you actually can do that pretty well. You're just bringing your arm down. I'm like body, 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 momentum, straight lines. Because it really helps us to keep them defined. Um, I don't know how much time we have, maybe five, ten minutes. Okay. Okay.